This is Brownies Podcast. How good is funny? Jesus Christ. That was the best first round of finals I've ever seen. We ever. did this podcast on Friday and we spoke about the Thursday night game maybe being the best final we've ever seen. It wasn't even the best of the weekend. No, it wasn't. It, it, compared it to the 94 final series when, of course, uh, North Melbourne Hawthorne drew and it went to extra time. That's right. And then that night, Billy Brown was kicked to go after the siren against the Bulldogs. He was the Billy king of Geelong. King of Geelong. <laughs> Absolutely. But I thought it was that four games. Shit. How, 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 do you rank them? how do you rank the four games? Four, <sighs> four to look, one. Number one. Number one, Collingwood Geelong. Yes, Whoa. I agree. Looking at that game, and we were there as part of Fox Footy's coverage, 91,000, couldn't hear ourselves speak, uh, think. But looking at that game, I thought, that's 30% up on a normal home and away game. Yeah. And I thought, how the hell would someone like the Gold Coast Suns or a team that's not playing in front of big crowds all the time, how the hell would they cope with that sort of pressure and noise and atmosphere? Oh. It was just unbelievable. So obviously those two teams are quite used to it. That was one. Number two, Brisbane. Uh, number... Yeah, I, 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 think, I, th- I think just shaded the Sydney Melbourne game. I didn't think Melbourne were great. Sydney were fantastic, weren't they? And then the dogs, Fremantle, great comeback. Great Fremantle, forty-one points down yeah. the final. How do you f- that up with you, the dogs? How do you f- that up? Had not kicked a goal until the four-minute mark of the second quarter. Sorry, four minutes left in the second quarter. They didn't. They were going to go in at halftime goalless, and then they got a few late. And yeah, I, I can't believe. They came back and won it. Jonathan, you were commentating uh, Geelong Collingwood, and I, I couldn't couldn't work out why I was aroused when I was watching it. Mm. Then and then I noticed Nick Rewald wearing a turtleneck. <laughs> it was a bold look. Who does the wardrobe at, at Fox Footy, JP? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, Derek Zoolander, obviously, uh, because when he turned up in there, I said, "You're not wearing that on air." Eh? <laughs> Is this a party well, trick? He actually looked very good. A but, Swedish model. Yeah, yeah. But after he, like Twitter was blowing up all over, you this. can't wear that, mate. What? Twitter went crazy. Hey, let him go. It's a turtle. It's a fine turtle. Fine turtle. Re- remember when uh, t- late in the coverage, a bird nearly on Bucks. Really? And so it was Gary, my, this is the seating order, Gary, myself, Bucks, what a and Nicky Rewalt. I just reckon the bird's got his target out of whack. I reckon he sent that turtle neck from the sky and just dropped the bomb and it's just floated. Just wayward of Nicky Rewalt. It was supposed to land on his turtle neck. Was, was yeah. Rui rattled because uh, the turtle was... Did he, do you think he expected the turtle to get attention as much as it did? Well, I knew that because uh, he, he does... He, look... He does check the phone a bit, and uh, <laughs> it's fair to say that word did get through pretty early on. <laughs> did it? Word got through pretty early. So, but you know, he wore it. He wore it strong. I'm not sure I could pull it off. How would you go with the turtleneck? <laughs> oh, I've never owned one, worn one. I, it's far too sophisticated for my. Could you imagine wardrobe? the feedback from the WhatsApp group if one of us <laughs> wore a turtleneck? On so you know, you know the the red carpet or the Cannes Film Festival or yeah, the, you yeah. know the Hollywood actresses. Met Gala, Met Ball. Yeah, when they know that they've got a really bold dress on, right? Yeah, they man. know it's going to cause attention. Well, well, you're a red carpet expert. You used to host the red I carpet at Brownlow. I Mills. certainly did. You've I... been there for the rotisserie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, my word. They were spinning around left, right, and centre. Um, he would have had to have known before he went on the live television for the biggest game of the year that that turtleneck was going to create a little league of its own. <laughs> does it have a Twitter account yet? It does, actually. It's it's called Toey Tell. Yes, suppose. <laughs> I've got Toby. a very exciting announcement for our next public engagement. We're going to have team turtlenecks. Whoa! We're all going to be in the same turtleneck in just different sizes. It's going to be a great look. Hey. Back to the footy. Do you respect Collingwood yet? Just because quickly, I, just quickly back to the, the turtle. <laughs> just quickly on the turtle now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was f***ing mortified. Yes. When, at the age of five, yes. my dad, Brian, was playing in a grand final, country grand final, yeah. Colac versus South Warrnambool. Yeah. And obviously, I wanted to be the mascot. Yeah. And it was the back end of winter. Mm. So, mum wouldn't let me go. Just dressed in the Tigers jumper. She made me wear a turtleneck <laughs> underneath the Tigers jumping uh, before uh, I ran really? out as the mascot. <laughs> hey, I still haven't forgiven my mother for it. I've been scarred by it ever since. Are That's why any... you'll never see me wearing a <laughs> turtleneck no, out no, in the public. the turtleneck. I'd love to no get a way. photo of that as well. Has your mum got a photo of that? Mum's got a photo of it, absolutely. Mate, hey, I'll stab you if you make me wear a turtleneck. Can we neck, ring Rui and just say nice turtle and hang up? Or will that will that? Will no, that absolutely. Resin? Get him on the phone. Let's go, yeah. let's go. Get let's him go. on the phone. Would you ever wear a turtleneck? Not even on my corpse, mate. <laughs>
<laughs> not at his open casket funeral, would he allow a turtleneck? Pick up, Roy. Oh, having a workout. Oh, he's got big pipes in the mouth. He moment. does. I hope we get his answering machine. It's a good oh. looking man. He just got a little bit of dough in the guts, though. Yeah. You tell he just, you go, yeah, there's always an overhang from your career. If we get his answering machine, I'll play the mating turtle into it. Yes. Who doesn't have a voice, mate? I know, that's a, he's a very long, it's a long ring. ring. This is long too ring. many f- rings. Has he got any albino in him? <laughs> 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 nah, he's from the Aryan Brotherhood. <laughs> Who doesn't have a voicemail in this day and age? I know. Maybe oh. so he doesn't get abused by randoms. All right, we'll try him again later. Tell me you finally respect Collingwood. Because... I was- I respect their pressure, and I respect their ability to hang tough. They're in but their I own... I said to you... What? They've won all these close ones in the home and away season. I bet you they go out in straight sets. Mate, they were... They could have won that easily. Yeah, they're they they're in the same league as Geelong. And now if they lose to Fremantle, yeah. they're out in straight sets. They're not going to lose to... Fre- what? Are you high, man? <laughs> <laughs> now, why isn't anyone respecting Collingwood? Well, it was a great game of footy. What was it? Like, it was yes. a great game of footy, and, and Geelong could have... Sorry, they nearly knocked over Geelong. When Dugowie got hot, I thought they were going to knock him over. But they are in danger of it. Yes! And I think that's part of the reason why Craig McRae had his pointed comments in the post game. I think that was a reset about his pl- for his players. Yep. Trying to reset them as quickly as possible and not marinate in the, oh, you guys were good, because there's going to be a lot of backslapping going on and saying, you were brave, you are admiral, you nearly beat Geelong. Because if players marinate in that for a couple of days, yep. it affects their performance next week. All of a sudden, they get jumped by Fremantle next Saturday, mm. and she's season over. So I absolutely... Um, respect Collingwood. I, res- I respect Collingwood. But I think Craig McRae has given the first insight into the dangers of a team getting ahead of themselves and relying on past results and finishing the gotcha. top four. And body language when he said, stand up, don't act like losers. Yes. That's, I thought that was just great. You know, you, you were fantastic. You've lost. Let's n- not sulk. And, and, Here we go. Here know. we go. The siren goes and there's um, half a dozen of our guys laying on the ground. That, for me, that's not a winner. That's, that's um, acting like a loser. Um, we lost the game. We're not losers. So I just made that point. Ooh. How good was my tease? Oh, yeah, That's very nice. good very tease, brother. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks, yeah. guys. I, I, <laughs> you could say unusual comments because you don't see pointed remarks like that in a post-game press conference very often. But I loved it. Good. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I think it was a message to his playing group, which clearly he would have spoken to them pre that press conference. Yeah. And it was from the Lee Matthews book. There was no doubt about it. Lee would obviously talk to his players through the media Good at times. psychology. Great psychology, and he's all about moving forward, not thinking about the past, and realising what you're there for. So we're not there to be also rants and to pat ourselves on the back for having a top four finish. We are here to win a premiership this season. Suck it up! So suck it up. I remember, and those post-game things used to be big. Lethal back in the day, I remember the, a, a message that stood with us forever. 2001, uh, after a game, Vossi and Herdy, we'd been beaten by Essendon by about 10 goals, smashed off the park. And him and Vossi came together post-game, and they're shaking hands and they're having a laugh. Well, in the post-game review meeting, do the voice. Lethal got it, and he goes, he he played the, he showed the replay of Herdy and Vossi having and a shake, watch, and Notting Hill having a laugh. Yes. <laughs> and then he goes, he stopped the tape. He goes, rewind, rewind. I think the, um, I think Maddie Hoogan was the video man. Maddie, rewind it. So I go back, and we just sat there and we watched this replay three or four times. And then at the end of it, he goes, right. If I ever see one of you blokes ever laughing after a game again, he said, Vossi, hey, it's a nice feeling, isn't it? Hey, captain of a team that's just been smashed by 10 goals. Good feeling, isn't it? Bang! He goes, don't ever let me see you do that again. He goes, that's not being a captain. Follow me, son, and I'll teach you how to be a captain. And, mate, it was a message that stood with me forever. And the lesson out of it was, Lethal's just Guilty. He never won a brown loan. <laughs> Lisa Lethal said to Vossi, follow me, son. So they walked straight into the men's hey, urinal. Oh, hey, 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 his hey, 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 around his I turned his mic off. I turned his mic off. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Oh, you son of a bitch. But you know, oh, shit. But you know what? It was a bloody, it was a strong message. And one, that after, even wins in the future after that, I was always conscious of what I did post guard. Yeah. You know, even after a big win, you wouldn't be laughing that much. But so that message will stand with these players, no doubt. And I think it'll hold them in better stead on Saturday night. Sydney straight to a prelim. 
And it's going to be either Frio or Collingwood. They're in the box seat. Playing them. Now. Mate, they're going to make the a home final. prelim against what you would consider the weaker side of the draw. I think so. Um, and then I guess, yeah. And then the other the other side's a challenging one. I, I don't think Geelong would be that keen to play Melbourne. Melbourne is still a smoky. They've still got capabilities. Aren't they? they can still arm wrestle a team into submission. Uh, at the moment, they're not going as well as they were last year. Brisbane just need to come down to Melbourne, don't they? And if they're going to win the game, they've just got to throw all caution in the wind yep. and take the game on. You look at Melbourne and with Petrarca clearly hobbled. They're yeah, wobbly. He's got a, a stress fracture or a little green hair fracture of his little, tibia. Little hair, hair like a green hair fracture. <laughs> green, green stick. <laughs> the man's got a green hair. Line. Yeah, he's got a and, hairline fracture. And do you know fibula. what I heard him say? You don't run on your tibia. <laughs> <laughs> I you're, thought he's been listening to JB, but that doesn't make sense. Well, you f***ed that up, though. You don't run on the fibula. <laughs> <laughs> you're quite a wordsmith, dog. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think the most impressive win of the weekend, though, was Sydney, Dino. Yeah, you, man. You made a good point. Like They dismantled Melbourne in My the second God. half, didn't they? So their pressure is like... Is every bit as good as Collingwood? We spoke about Collingwood's pressure, but they've got other other elements of their game. They move the ball with great precision. They kick the ball well. They've got a good defence, and they're doing it without. Well, Buddy and and Logan McDonald had no impact no, on the game. Buddy was irrelevant. How good was it watching Buddy and Steve May talk to each other? Yeah, two heavyweights just riling each other up. I love that. Amazing. No, he's, he's so competitive, Bud. Like he didn't want to give Maisie the the little fist pump or the, the, the shake before the game. Nah, because Buddy's he's a competitive. No. Um, and then Maisie just just took him to town, didn't he? Oh. He just he was the best man on the ground, and and Melbourne would have probably lost by ten goals if yeah. it wasn't for Steve May. But the no, Sydney, actually, you're making a good point. Melbourne were lucky to be within what twenty. May they were absolutely the, the Sydney Swans. To me, when I look at how they play, horses just got the whole team playing an unbelievable, disciplined, team first game. Like they all play their role, and you you sort of look at them, you go, who was best on ground, right? Robottom was great when he had to be great. Yeah, Fox was great. Awesome. The McCartans were great. Papley was amazing. Dylan Stephen, who we don't yeah. know a lot about, comes like, and it was Hickey still a, was amazing. It was still hard yeah. to to say who was definitively the yeah. best, right? Because they all just know their role and they just play to their strengths and they don't try and do too much. You know, like they know yeah. what their their strengths are. How's Horse to done it. this? He's kept them competitive for a long, long time. Yes, well, he's got a secret weapon. I think he's got the best winning. What is his? Rate where is his AFL weapon, uh, Brody? Yeah. Just south of the border. South of, south the, border. of the border. He's got a secret weapon, and the boys. Cola. Yeah. Cost of living allowance. Oh, is that it? Nah, I think they got abandoned, didn't it? A few years yeah, ago. Yeah, it did. After, after well, since two thousand three, when remember, famously they'd signed Terry Wallace behind the scenes, and then Swans went on a run, and they changed the decision and kept Ruzi in. So since two thousand three, we knocked them over in a prelim. They've really been up. That Bloods culture was born from there. So the best part of 20 years, this blood culture, which is it's probably hard to explain unless you've been a part of it, but what you do know with Sydney, every time we played against them, dog, and every time now we watch them for the best part of 20 years, they bring maximum pressure, they bring maximum effort in the contest, and they're just hard to beat. Yeah, consistent. Consistent, aren't they? And that's the... That's, Nuts. If I was an outsider defining the blood's culture, that is it. Mm -hmm. And it seems to have team-first players. A lot of great role players. So they could win it. They you, could absolutely win it on the back of that performance. You can not. tell that they're a tight-knit team, right? Like, I was in Blacktown yesterday watching their VFL side play. The, the Gold Coast Suns played the Sydney Swans, <laughs> right? <laughs> Shit heap of Blacktown. But the whole Sydney Swans list was there. Really? Yep. And they were sitting watching the game, and the Swans were coming back from about 26 points yeah. down in the last quarter. And I was watching them, the players, yeah. cheering on That's awesome. every goal that their needful side or their VFL side kicked and they were like they were all in one, right? I love that. And you know, you had some players that yeah. obviously uh, Josh Kennedy and, and a few of them wanting the, the VFL team to win. So I got like, one question. Tell me Buddy wasn't in Blacktown. No, I didn't see Buddy there. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the rest of them were there though. The rest of them were there. Yeah. Hey, what's his MCC bandits business? A couple of uh, friends of mine uh, who will remain nameless. Babich and Burbank. <laughs> <laughs> they went to the footy Friday night, yep. um, avid Melbourne supporters, and um, they've got their MCC membership, mm -hmm. um, so I couldn't have gone with them because I obviously don't have it. And um, halfway through the night, my WhatsApp group, but I mean separately to the podcast, mm -hmm. lit up. A couple of guys had seen 
my mate's getting removed from the MCC. Really? And I sort of said, oh, they probably don't have a, a collar on their mm -hmm. shirt or mm -hmm. they, they've sat in someone's seat. Uh, the ghastly mistakes that you make at the MCC. <laughs> <laughs> no. God, God forbid. <laughs> no. One of them lit up a blunt. And was smoking what? weed yes. in the MCC <laughs> and was removed. That's not true. Uh, apparently, it's for medicinal reasons. <laughs> oh, okay. But this guy's perfectly healthy to my eye. Wow. Yeah, so they, they were gone just, just before There's half time. Nothing wrong with that. You just. <laughs> and the MCC uh, members around had a, had a keen nose for the scent. That's un Do you see Kyrgios complaining at the US Open that people were sparking right, up in yeah. the crowd? Because you forget it's pretty much legal in New York City, right? Oh, in the yeah. state of New York. How funny is the, the visual of that? A couple of old sort of 90-year-olds <laughs> and the MCC members and they start... <laughs> What's that? <laughs> What's that? What's that? Like What's that? Like like to me. Because I got... Do you know you were anywhere near the MCG, were you? Hey, I got a doctor certificate, brother. The bandits were there. <laughs> Back in a second. Welcome back to Brownie's podcast. After one of the greatest first rounds of finals, I think any of us have ever seen. Brody Pomeroy, Brody Points Bet Pomeroy. All right. So last week uh, on Friday, I did a little bit of commentary. We were talking about mm. what our uh, victory songs after kicking a goal would be, and I thought I did a great job. Well, you started every uh, passage by saying, "All right," and yeah, that's a good way to start. That's, that's a good way to start a call of the football. Uh, sure. No, it was like oh, you need a call, you need a catch cry. Okay. Oh, Wowie. Yeah. Wow. His, is, his is all right. The only See? thing is, you stole it off Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, my mum listened to it, and she thought I was a great commentator. Oh, mum, your mum would think anything you do is good. She thought I was a great commentator. I was like, hang on a a I was like, maybe you guys are wrong, and she is right, which feels like it would be the yeah, case. Yeah, no doubt. She's never been wrong before. And so I thought I'd bring on an expert, and the guy's name is Luke Tunnicliffe. Okay. And he is an expert on football commentary. He looked after Triple M footy for... An eternity. Still does. Still does, and he is the expert. You're trying on... to retire him. He is. It's time for him to go. Oh. Uh, and so I thought I'd get him on, and I will do a call, and we'll okay. see what he says, and yeah. see if he thinks He's got I a good, very good ear for a commentator. He's got a good nose, too. It's quite long. Hello? Tunner Cliff, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Hello, Dino. Hello, yeah. mate. We hear you're an avid listener to Brownie's podcast. I ne never miss, never miss. <laughs> See, and mate, you, I think, are an expert on AFL commentary. I think no one else in this business knows AFL commentators more than you. Would you agree? I, well, points bet. I'm not sure I can roll with that, but uh, if that's how you want to frame it, I, I suppose I'll take it. Tun, is your favourite common commentator out there right now? Um, well, I'd probably have to be biased and say uh, the two blokes we got on a Friday night at Triple M being Howie and Darth. Yep. Because if I didn't say that, mm, they'll, uh, they they'll never let me hear the end of it. <laughs> You'd be in a lot of strife. What about a catch cry? Is it important? Because he starts his commentary, our man Brody, points bet Pomeroy with, all right. It's a little bit flat, but uh, whereas BT's got wowie and wow. some of the other ones. Are you happy with that catch cry? I'm certainly not happy with that. Is that what you roll with, points bet? <laughs> yeah, you've got to start off. you just got to set up, you know, you got to set up the game. you got to set up the moment. And it starts with all right. See? All right. Bang. Hearing people call Brody points bet outside the studio is, is so good. It's, it's magic. All right. So you want some crowd sound effects? It's just some crowd sound effects. Okay. And then I'm just going to give you a little demonstration and you let me know how great it is. Okay. Here we go. All right. It's cut. <laughs> Stop laughing, you can't uh, laugh. Sorry, sorry, from the top, from the top, from the top. Here we go. All right. And McAvoy out of the middle. Hodge there. Yes, he's got his head over the ball. He comes out with a little standing pirouette. Bang, he takes it. Oh, he runs out. Boom, it's Mitchell on the outside. He goes to Mitchell. What, is it going to be a left foot? Is it going to be a right foot? Both are delicious. Oh, my God, he's going inside forward 50. What? Campbell's down there. Oh, it's gone to Brown. He's brought it to ground. He's taken one on from the boundary. Trips over a little bit, but he's okay. He's come through and he's put it 10 rows back. Oh, my God. They're the words that he said in the middle of a call. You used, oh, my God, in the middle of a call point. Back. Now, honestly, I've worked on Triple M for 19 years. That's as bad as I've heard. It you disappoint me, mate. It's a great review. That was good. That was, mate, there was passion. It's, there was anticipation. It sounded like you were pleasuring yourself. Mate, delicious. 
Delicious you stole, has been mate. used. You've stolen that. Yeah, I don't know what else to go with. You um, did you finish school? Because your literation, yeah. your your use of the English language in a sentence is appalling. Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was good. I think during no, school mate. he was sniffing texters down in the back row. To be honest, he was the one smoking you, the. Blunt. You've got to rise points, but you got to rise with the moment. Your excitement was there. I'll give you that. Your inflections were appalling. You you need better describing words in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you been taught the four W's Ooh. before you get into your calling career? No, what are they? Okay, so the four W's are where is the ball so on the field? Who has the ball? So I think you've probably picked that one. What is the time in the game? And what is the score? Yeah. Now, I I just... I didn't hear any of those the, W's. <laughs> you know, I you probably picked a couple of them. There was one W there that was that you haven't said. Wanker. Yes, dog. Someone said it. <laughs> no. Someone had to it's say it. everyone's mind. Tunners, well, thank you for your review. Uh, maybe we'll call you again another time if Brody improves. <laughs> I'm sure he won't. <laughs> <laughs> See you, mate. Thanks, heaps. Thanks, right. mate. Your, uh, your excitement levels was fatiguing. Yeah, too yeah. high. Like, to listen to that... Two hours, yeah. mate, it'd be mind numbing. Mm. We'd all be in a mental institution and you're more, or in a dark room. You're more, with a f- f- you were more excited when Hodgie got the ball out of the middle than you were when the goal was kicked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got a bit excited early and it, I couldn't go any high. I'd already got rid of my excitement. So then it was just kind of, yeah. It was okay, shit, let's man. call Nicky Rewell now. Yeah. Let's get to the bottom of this turtle neck. Oh, turtle gate. Good day, mate. Hello, mate. How are you? Can you hear that in the background? Yeah, what is that? It's a turtle yeah. mating. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brewie, now I need to ask. We need to ask. Before you went on TV That's Saturday. Dino, by the way. Hey, Rui, how you going, brother? Did you know I'm that this man. turtleneck would cause the, the stir, the sensation Erections that it has? everywhere it caused. Uh, well, I got, oh, look, I was, I was nervous. I was nervous. Um, but so, sometimes you got to be at the start of a trend, Brownie, rather than, rather than uh, part, of, part of those trying to play catch up. So, really, the turtle was on and you looked in the mirror and you thought, I'll get away with this. <laughs> well, I have, haven't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually think you have. Yeah. It was bold, was it was like, beautiful. Yeah, so I reckon it was probably like, I was expecting a 20, like an, a 20 80 split, uh-huh. as in 20% good feedback, people <laughs> saying, well done, and 80%, 80% people walking past saying, you, you absolute wanker. <laughs> you are a uh, but I reckon it's probably gone the opposite. I reckon mm. it's been 80%, I oh, good on you. For having a go and twenty percent, yeah, twenty percent still has been pretty brutal. But um, some some good funny feedback, some really really good comparison uh, comparison shots. Um, you know, one 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 bloke saying it was nice for you to take some time stealing expensive artwork in Paris to actually go and call them because <laughs> <laughs> I look like a cat burglar. So there's, been, there's been some good stuff. I hey, thought it was good. good That's like Cole Trickle said mm. in Days of Thunder yeah. all those years ago. Yeah. I'm more afraid of being nothing than I am of being hurt. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's that, that nice. Was <laughs> that's yeah, nice. That's it. You know what I thought when I was wearing the turtleneck? I thought I'd rather be the man in the arena. It was, where, it was those, sort of, Absolutely. those sort of vibes. Although, yeah. that bird did nearly land on Bucks's shoulder. I, I'm pretty. I think that was aimed at you, Rooster. <laughs> and it just blew off course. Would you? Would you shut those turtles up? <laughs> really? Well, we can't uh, wait to see what you wear this weekend. All eyes will be on your neck. Oh, um, gosh, we yeah, love you, man. Right. Thanks for picking up the phone. Thanks, mate. Cheers, man. Thanks, I was mate. really just covering up some hickeys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> oh, shit. All do right. people actually, do people still, still give hickeys? Yeah, man. They do? Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah. I give it's a dying breed. I give Carl's one a couple of weeks ago. Really? Absolutely. Accidentally. Yeah. Just got a little bit passionate. Is that there. right? There's nothing, nothing else happened. We are in the kitchen at the time in front of the kids. <laughs> 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 What, what are you doing? Why? Look at us! <laughs> Look at us! Uh, I'd love to see someone go into a job interview or something and have like a neck full of hickeys. That'd be funny. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, what's this kickboxing story, JB? Oh, yeah. Well, um, 
just reminded me. So Tay Emery or Ty Emery, a female uh, kickboxer, she actually entered her first bare knuckle in the bare knuckle fighting competition. She entered that on the weekend, and she came out and she was fighting Rangaran Kachi. Ah, Kachi. Ah. Rangaran Kachi. Now. Mm. Rungaran had her bell rung, if you know what I mean, because I Ty knocked her out, Bang. knocked her out cold. And then she launched into a celebration, which was unusual. Now, let's play the audio first, Dino. Welcome to Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, Ty Emery. Interesting celebration right there. What was the celebration? She jumped up onto the top rope in celebration, and she lifted up her... Uh, Shirt to reveal her breast. Wow! She flashed the crowd. Really? Bold. <laughs> that's what you see in music festivals. Bold. Bold. That's a. That's a. Oh, a pretty Did you revved say bold up or at, bold. 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 Bold with bold. a D. On. That's a pretty revved up. I guess you've got nothing else to go, right? You're on the you're on the rope. You're celebrating. Yeah. You've got no extra gear to go to. Yeah. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? It's either do a backflip off the top rope mm. or. Get him out. Woodstock 1998. It's interesting. It's, it's an underrated celebration. Correct. Uh, back in the day, it reminded me of a mate's wedding, one of my close mates' wedding on the Gold Coast, typical bargain bargain in the Gold Coast. The bridesmaids, obviously during the speeches, they did all the speeches, and then the maid of honour got up there and did the announce, did her speech and said to her, everyone in the crowd, there was about 150 of sitting down, a nice, we've got a nice little surprise for us. All the bridesmaids lined up. Oh, no. And flashed their breasts to all the people in attendance. Oh, really? Mate, oh. it was astonishing. That is brilliant. Mate, they got their bath plugs out. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Mate, you should have seen the mother of the bride. She <laughs> was up back in a second. Welcome back to Brownie's podcast. Uh, my, again, what a what a weekend of finals footy. But something else that happened on the weekend was this video surfaced of this uh, kid in the Gold Coast who allegedly robbed a service station. Mm. Now, the video is of him leaving the police station the next morning and getting door-stopped, Seb Costello style, by two, by Channel 9 and Channel 7. He spent the night in the watch house yep. at Southport, and uh -huh. I know exactly what he was going through. Okay. Because I've <laughs> done the exact same thing. Is it comfy, dog? Do you get a pillow in there? You don't get a pillow, <laughs> but the good thing is when I snuck out the next morning... Yeah. There weren't waiting cameras. Okay. Now, normally when people get doorstop, they're sheepish, John, because they've normally done something wrong. But this kid from the start is on the offensive against these reporters. John, did you have anything to say about last night? I didn't rob the store down. Why'd you get arrested then at the store? Because I was around there, you s. <laughs> you seven news. <laughs> news. 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 Oh. All right, so automatically this kid is something else, he's, right? He's going full Corey Worthington. Full. And he's that, he's gone so hard that part of you think maybe he actually didn't do it. Like, mm. if he's got aces up his sleeve that he's innocent. Well, because they arrested him and they said that he had a machete. Oh, f Went up and, and got yeah. money from them and then took off but then came back. That's how they got him, this 18 year old. Here's was, more. Do you think it's going to look good on the news carrying on like a total oh, knock? I don't give a f I didn't do shit. It's so f off. Are you going to be fighting the charges? <laughs> yes. <c> <laughs> Ooh, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Bro, it's unbelievable. That's what Brody says to me every morning. I'm asking <laughs> if I want him to get him a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So he's pleading his innocence here. Yeah. Yes. You know, and he's he's staunch. I robbed that store, so you guys can go jamming up your ass. Are you on anything now? No. Do you remember anything that happened last night? Yes, I remember everything. Walking home and I get arrested for some bullshit I didn't do. <laughs> bullshit. Bro, bro, you're a if I would I go... Bro, bro. Bro, you're a if I would I go rob a store and then walk through the park and walk back to the place I just robbed. Nah. That's a fair point. Although That's, serial point. killers do that. Yes. Murderers do that. They go back to the scene of the crime. Mm. Poo so, joggers as well. Always. They do too, so mm. we punched holes in that theory. <laughs> All right, this last bit is where he gets. I've never seen such quick thinking for someone getting doorstopped in terms of them, him playing with the reporters like they're mice and he's a cat. A good level of intelligence here. Quick. How's your night in the watch house? Oh, yeah, pretty good, eh? Yeah. Your mum came around and she came visit me. And I had a pretty good time, to be honest, yeah. What are you going to do today? Probably go see her again. It sounds like a good idea to me. Are you going to go back to the watch house? No, I'm going to go see his mum. Then I'm going to go see your sister. 
Oh, sorry, but you will in nine months, won't you? <laughs> you don't get the joke because you're a that's, un that's unbelievable. Right. <laughs> Astonishing stuff. <laughs> so we are talking about this on the radio on Nova in Melbourne uh, this morning, and then yeah. we get a call dog from that dude's brother. Really? Right. Jake, you got any thoughts on this? You seen this kid? So I do. It's actually my brother, and I'm on the way to Queensland now to pick him up. I don't believe uh, you, Jake. I do, because if you look up my previous history of my brother and calling you guys, oh, yes. he's actually been in a bit of trouble. Before I've rang up with him, actually robbing No way, Jake! That's, that's not the same kid! Jake. Yes, it is. Oh, Jake, the last time, no, we sp last time we spoke to you, you were having to get him after he'd been busted using a fake ID at the strippers. Is that right? And after that, I sent him to Queensland to live with our uncle and because I couldn't handle him anymore, and now he's still up to it again. What did you think when you saw this damn footage? It just must be shocking for you. Do you want us to stop playing it? Is this very No, untasteful? no, it's fine. It's, when I seen the footage, I, it was just... My wife started crying, obviously, oh. and, yeah, I just started getting phone calls, and the police contacted oh. me because... My uncle didn't want to deal with it, and yeah. Well, because he's strongly denying it. In that's what I'm strongly clips. denying it because that's just who he is. He mm. denies everything. Oh. He denied using a fake ID to get into the strip club and all that. He denied robbing the Seven Eleven. Why is this all on your shoulders, yeah. by the way? Yeah. Because we just we don't know how to handle him, and I'm the only one he listens to. Question is the the Gucci cap's not real, right? It's fake. <laughs> no, it's not real. He's just a wannabe gangster. <laughs> <laughs> Great question from, from Jackie, Jackie, Jackie Charles. Um, he, he's gone viral, and there's a hell of a lot of people on Instagram and everything that thinks he, he's a legend now. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up signing with Max Marks <laughs> and doing a, a promotional a tour. A tour. <laughs> Dog, you picked the perfect level of management. Max Marks it. Um, he was... Now, he sounds very similar to him. So, you're right. You called his bluff. You asked the question, are you really his, his yeah. brother? Yeah, he yeah, yeah. He actually sounded very similar to I him. Think so. I think he was sincere about it. Yeah. But, like, if, if this kid did use a machete, that's pretty f***ed up, man. Like, yeah. Well, he didn't, use, he didn't use it. He was just holding it as right. in a threatening motion. Oh, that's to, all right, to get the money. That's, all, that's all good. <laughs> that's yeah. all good. Before we have a look at the... The, uh, the second round of finals, dog, it's time for... Oh. What a world. Now, this only came across my desk this morning, and it was one that I was very intrigued about because it involves a, a lady, a British OnlyFans, uh, Becky Holt. She's 34 years of age. She's completely covered with tattoos, mm -hmm. right? She wants a full body suit. So from literally the tips of her toes all the way up, wants to be completely covered in tattoos, mm -hmm. which has resulted in her spending $42,000 but also countless hours, five trips to the tattoo artist to tattoo every part of her body. Her labia. Is that how you say that? I think it is. It is. I think you've done it labia? well. Labia? Yeah. You, you, wow. You've never said the word labia in your life? I didn't know what it was. Is it near the clitoris? Not far. <laughs> well, that's why, because I've never found one of them. Either. <laughs> <laughs> so she won't give up the identity of, of what is on the labia, um, but she hasn't been able to uh, be intimate with her partner for a month because mm. of the, the pain and the swelling. The risk of infection too. And she she now um, she now holds a record for the most tattooed private parts in the world. So oh, lovely. That's oh, that to me is W-O-W. Wow. No. W-A-W. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Oh, come on. Wow. Wow. What a world. Where's Box? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I got that from you today because you text me WAW. What's happening here? But oh. you said W O W. Yeah, right. wow. So wow. Wow. You didn't mean wow at the beginning. <laughs> You're right, but it no. worked, didn't it? <laughs> yes. This way you say, all right. All right. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Melbourne, Brizzy, come on. These surely should do it. That was a, it feels like that was Brisbane's grand final last week on Thursday, John. Oh, I hope not. I hope not. Uh, it's a return match between the uh, these two teams that, of course, a bit of controversy with Dane Zorko and Harrison oh, Petty. no sh a bit of a clash. There's been a bit going on between those two clubs the last few times, Doc. So oh. uh, it'll be interesting to see if tempers do flare. What yeah. ends up happening out there in the game. Oh. The Lions' chance is they have to be brave and mm. take the game on. If they just get sucked into playing Melbourne's, you know, kick it long down the line, Melbourne will absolutely destroy them. So the Lions are a good chance, especially with Petrarca injured, but I see it's a big task. I do believe some of the Sydney players were actually into Harrison Petty on the weekend for being a crybaby. Um, um, 
getting into him about crime. Tommy not Pabli about, may have had something to say to him. Yeah, not about the actual why it was crime, yeah. but about crying. Yeah. So. Oh, that's healthy. Um, well, I would, would go there. Yeah, oh, that's play on. I would, that, that is absolutely play on. That's do you think on. Brady or not? No, absolutely. You can't do that. Yes, you can. No, you, you guys are from another time, yeah. you old f- That is why you made third grade football at, at its very best because you lack the killer spirit he's got you hey, there you lack, lack the fight you need to be like a hungry dog yeah he's 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 locked on you with his tractor yeah. beam eye <laughs> um Frio Collingwood yeah no it'll be it'll be an interesting week so the Pies have got to f- set themselves up they've got to fix themselves back up and get back on track Taylor Adams was uh, yeah that was a uh, that was a big big out big injury for him so and it was nice that he found a little girl that held his hand when he crossed the road Please. Oh, yeah. hey, come, that was a hard story. story. You son of a bitch. Go, is, we're going. What is wrong with you? We're going. No, no, Shut we're up. not going. Not going. We were going to call a random member of our WhatsApp oh, again. Oh, yeah, we're going to do that. Yes. Now, we'll find a number. Beep, 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 beep. Random. Compute. All right. Now, apparently, this guy's name is Scotty. <sighs> Scott, no friends. Hey, Scotty. Please leave a detailed message after the tone. <laughs> when you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey, Scotty. <laughs> I used to prank people sometimes when they'd say, oh, what's your name? I'd say, Scott. And they'd say, Scott who? And I'd say, Scott, f- all to do with you. Got him. <laughs> I hadn't heard that one before. Jonathan, no, any- original. I know he has got no friends, this bloke. <laughs> Anything to say to Scotty? Uh, well, happy Father's Day, Scotty. You might not know you're a father, but I'm sure you've got a few <laughs> illegitimates floating around out there. And points, mate. Like Dino. Yeah. Hey, Scott, it's uh, Brownie's podcast here, mate. Good to speak to you. Hey, uh, Scotty, uh, we'll call you again later when we're Polax at 2 a.m. on Saturday. I think we're done. Uh, happy Father's Day, too, to all the fathers yeah. listening. So, uh, Dog, what'd you get? Uh, look after you, I didn't even boys? see my kids because I was uh, in Blacktown. Uh, of course. Um, and what a place to be home, on Father's I, Day. I was asleep, so... Uh, I got uh, Toblerone. Your favourite uh, chocolate? Fa- favourite right. chocolate. That's nice. uh, some Jiffy's Fire Lighters. That's good. You like L- fires? I love fires. Jackie Brown's a little pyro maniac. And uh, a tailor made glove and tailor made golf balls. Which, oh, do you? Which oh, I thought you've got looks, plenty of them already. Looked remarkably similar to the ones that are in my cupboard at home. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, Kylie Brown, not a hell of a lot of preparation gone into the Father's Day present. Yeah. See you again. Brownies. Podcast.